Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is going to be talking about the young Nigerians that might be dealing with mental health challenges. Uh, UNICEF has, of course, stated that one in six Nigerians may be depressed. It says uh, one in six Nigerians between uh, um, the ages of 15 and 24. And also says 72% uh, um, um, uh, Nigerians are more, um, or rather 72% of Nigerian youth show more concern than youth in other parts of the world. We're speaking this morning with a psychologist, Benedict Sama. Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us, Benedict. All right, good morning. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm a clinical psychologist. And um, if I could know, I, I specialize in child and adolescent mental health services and practice. Then, um, what is depression? First of all, I would like to talk about um, what depression is. Okay, depression is um, persistent, no, consistent. Hold, hold, on, hold on, Benedict. All right. <laughs> okay. So uh, yes, let, let's 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 lead you know the uh, conversation. So so let's so for, first of all get you to speak on oh. um, statistics like these. You're right. One in six Nigerian right. children being depressed. Um, would you say that it's a it's a fact? You know, or maybe it's a, it's even worse than that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> even from our own um, daily experiences as a professional and referrer cases, I would say it's even worse. Okay, that um, that seems to be on um, that seems to underestimate the the number of figures or figures that we have. So it's actually more than that. It's more than that, sincerely, because we have the referrals on a daily basis is really really alarming. Um, children between the age of eight and above, we not an adolescent. So it's more than that. And and what are what are the most common um, cases that you've had to deal with? Because I think it's also great that we understand what exactly, um, you know, the exact mental health challenges that, you know, that we're talking about here. Uh, some people are dealing with anxiety, which, of course, the report has also stated. Some people are dealing All with right. depression. Some people, of course, are you know, really just mentally, you know, challenged, you know, on, on, a, on a level. So what is the most common, uh, you know, challenge that you've had to deal with with these young Nigerians? Okay, good. Um, I would say I've dealt with substance use and substance abuse more, to be sincere, over the uh, course of practice. Young Nigerians, um, most non Nigerians or most referrals that we've had have had issues to do with substance use, even more than depressions. But you know, but an interesting fact is that um, uh, majority of of um, substance abuse and substance use cases also result into depression. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's also look at the fact that, I mean, in the Nigerian context, according to the statistics that's been put out by UNICEF, uh, one out of six children, uh, you know, is depressed. Now, the Constitution yeah. would say that between the ages of, you know, one, or you want to talk about at what point a child develops, so we're looking at, let's say, one, two, three, to about 18. The level of dependency is still very high, even at 24, even at 25. So what could be responsible for you know, depression in children? Why are they depressed? Exactly. <clears throat> okay, um, good enough. There's what we call an early onset um, experience in depression or, definitely, or generally in mental health cases. So that means um, as what's the minimal age of um, discovery and research says three years. So as, as early as three years, you can begin to discover and diagnose depressions in children. You can begin to see the symptoms, even if you can't diagnose, but you can see the symptoms. Now, what what are the uh, risk factors in children, even though they are dependent? One of them is what we call a family history. So if there is a family history of depression in the fa I mean. In the, in the lineage, okay, either by genetics and by and from father, from mother, so the child is likely to have depression. Another one is you know marital distress. Researches over the years have confirmed that uh, uh, children in a conflicted family, in a conflicted home, okay, they are, they are vulnerable to depression. 
So you can then see that uh, most of these things is not just an, um, what the, the children actually cause. It's just as a result of circumstances surrounding the children. Um, are, are there um, symptoms? Are there things that you know a parent may spot? You know that we may be able to look at and, and you know spot you know signs of depression um, in a young Nigerian. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. So uh, let me just mention quickly that there is difference between depression and sadness. Okay. Generally, you know, um, every child sometimes will face sad, um, feel emotionally down. However, when these symptoms I'm going to mention persist and continues for a minimum of two weeks, when the symptoms of sadness, when the sadness continues for a minimum of two weeks, then you may need to, to seek um, professional help for depression. What are these symptoms? Okay, one of them is, you know, persistent or, con or continued loss of interest in activities. Now, for instance, what are the activities? Social activities, the child has, lo I mean, has lost interest in going to school, lost interest in, in anything school work, lost interest in play activities that he used to enjoy before. Persistent, you know, um, feeling of guilt, crying spell, low energy, social withdrawal. When a child consistently prefers to be by himself, he doesn't enjoy social um, interaction again. He wants to always be by himself, play with himself. He just withdraws. He just enjoys isolation. That is one of the symptoms of, of, um, of depression. Then another one is symptoms, sorry, feelings of hopelessness. The child just feels hopeless, just feels wordless, you know, crying spell. And the most important one, um, suicidal ideation. When a child continuously talks about suicide, okay, or, or tells you he feels like ending it, he feels like taking his life, I'm tired of life, you know, I, I'm tired of this environment, he has lost interest in food, or he's eating excessively. These are, uh, um, these are point out that parents may need to seek professional help. Thank you. All right. So, but um, looking at um, uh, the reports from UNICEF, uh, they say the findings from the survey show that young Nigerians show 72% more concern than youth from other countries in the area of finances. Young Nigerians show a high level of concern, with 72, uh, I mean, 74% of females and 66 uh, of males worried they don't have enough money for food. So it still brings me back to, I mean, the question of the fact that this. The dependency is high. I mean, at age 18, at age, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 18, 24, 25, a lot of people are still living with their parents. And it therefore shows that, you know, the responsibility of thinking about food, clothes, and shelter, and what have you, it's been taken care of. So why is that the problem? Okay, good. You know, the first thing I talked about, then I talked about the fact that there are some that the parents, I mean, children are not responsible of actually. In, in the essence of you know, their family history of depressions and their family conflict and, and child abuse. However, even, um, you know, WH who actually gave out another report statistic that, you know, people from developing nations are vulnerable to depressions, developing nations. So when it, so that, is a, that was a general report, was a general article. So when they say people, including children from developing nations. Now, what, what do we experience in developing nations? You have people with low economic status, okay, low financial capability to take care of themselves. And now, you know, when, when a child knows that, oh, I have um, two or three of my peers in class, I know what they eat, they eat um, certain kind of food, you know, certain kind of meat, and they don't see that <coughs> Uh, Mr. Benedict, uh, can you hear us? We seem to have lost uh, our clinical psychologist there, but it's a, it's a very in, in, important com conversation. And I think, you know, some of the, you know, the biggest points for me would be, you know, being able to spot it, you know, and also f trying to figure out why the statistics are so high in Nigeria. Why are young Nigerians under so much pressure? Um, is it because of, you know, the way the country currently is, or is it really just because of the, you know, the Nigerian mentality of making it big, you know, and, and, um, and um, you know, being, you know, self-sustainable? 
Um, those are, you know, for me, some of the big things. And um, we don't have a big enough conversation on mental health in Nigeria. Mm. Um, you know, and I will repeatedly say it, that a lot of people only talk about mental health when you are naked on the streets. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot of Nigerians who are in your office space today, who are in the hospitals, who are in the bank, who are in the, in the marketplaces, and everywhere that you go, who are probably even driving Ubers um, or driving their cars on the streets that have mental health challenges that aren't talked about enough. Um, these things all come from somewhere. Um, there's, a, there's a girl that I, that I see along, somewhere where I live in Lucky Phase 1, um, and I w slowly watched you know, her mental health degenerate into, you know, until it got to the state where she is now you know, scantily dressed, walking on, on the streets by 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, but I watched it play out you know, from day one when she's really just walking on the road talking to herself until it got to the stage. Um, we don't have you know, a big enough conversation on mental health. Um, <clears throat> I also feel like Nigerian workspaces don't recognize um, mental health you know, enough. They don't create any conversation on mental health. They don't create any space, you know, where staff, you know, and the, the, the mental health of staff is, you know, talked about or is taken care of. Um, there's no leverage. There's no, you know, little take a couple of days off, you know, it's because you're not feeling, you know, so well. There is, you know, none of those things come up, you know, and so, you know, you see staff continue to work day in, day out, regardless of how they feel mentally, um, not just physically now. Um, people don't need to be bedridden before you know that they are challenged or they need a couple of days off and, and things like that. Um, and also, why is a 16-year-old Nigerian, a 14-year-old Nigerian feeling under pressure to buy Benz, uh, feeling under pressure to, you know, to build a house or feeling under pressure to have you know, millions of naira in his account? These are some of the things that I believe have created uh, some of these statistics. One in six is really not good. Yeah, it's really no good. And and for me, uh, the major concern here is, I mean, if you look at some of the, the issues that they have really mentioned in that survey, uh, you talk about issue of food, which is actually, you know, a basic thing. And that's why, you know, for me, I'm looking at the fact that food, you know, as an adult or, I mean, a growing child, you get to that point where there are things that are just basic. And to some point you have, you know, the support system First of all, you're talking about the family, and that would be the responsibility of the family to cater for your basic needs. I mean, food, shelter, and clothing. And then, of course, afterwards, education can actually, you know, be the next thing. If you look at the Abraham Maslow, you know, theory of needs or that hierarchy of needs, you find that you must meet basic before you get to another point. So. I'm, I'm just saying, could, could it also be that there's a failure, you know, at the end of the day, that families no longer have what it takes, you know, to fend for these children. Absolutely. And uh, that's why, uh, you know, it has become an issue. He also mentioned the fact that, um, I mean, the report also mentioned the fact that there's, uh, you know, need to succeed when you, you compare yourself um, with your counterparts outside of the country. Absolutely. So it brings us back to the fact that, yes, you're talking about a 16-year-old wanting to have events and what have you and all of, all of that. But, you know, the issue of mental health is... Uh, like you have mentioned earlier on, it's a case where we don't pay attention to, and that's for some s. Then a lot of people uh, are, are afraid of the stigma that it comes with, and then because people really think that when you go to see, you know, a doctor or a psychologist to talk about, they probably think you're going crazy, you're go you're going not, and no one wants to, you know, be in that space where they think that oh, um, I'm, I'm depressed, I'm having mental health stuff, and then the fact. So first of all, the issue of stigma. Another issue is the issue of culture and religion. I mean, we live in a society where if you talk about the fact that you're sad, I'm like, you need to be strong. Come on, be strong, and nobody feels like, oh, you're not supposed to cry. Toughen up, and it's yeah. okay. You know why are you acting like you know you're not a man. You're a grown-up adult, and everybody. So I, I feel like there are a lot of um, um, you know struggles. There are a lot of issues that uh, it's not really allowing us to have this conversation. And I'm just hoping that this would just be another report and survey that everyone would just fold their arms and and say, okay, yeah, we're folding our arms, and then we're hoping that oh, that's just a report. It will pass. Our Nigerians can never get depressed because you hear that fact that Nigerians can't kill themselves. Nigerians don't commit suicide depressed. and Nigerians all of that. Enjoy life too much. Uh, we're yeah. too happy and all of that, and then it's, it's not possible. It's, it's crazy not how thing. we move. But every day you get to see yeah. that people are committing suicide. I didn't, it's I crazy how we moved from one time the happiest nation in the world to one in six Nigerians, you know, depressed. Because I remember when, when you know, that, um, you know, when that came out a couple of years ago, when it said, when, you know, does that report on Nigerians were the happiest people on earth? You know, a lot of people celebrated it and said, yeah, you know, because you have the Nigerian spirit. But you don't find that Nigerian spirit anymore. Um, and in response to some of the things that you mentioned, 
the you know perspective of you know poverty and you know parents not being able to fend for their children. Yes, you know people are you know broke. People are struggling and struggling really, really, really seriously. And it doesn't just affect the parents; it affects the children also. That struggle, that you know level of poverty, inability to feed, inability to house, inability to clothe, it affects everybody, not just the parent who is under pressure. Um, and so, yes, you know, those, you know, are obviously things that will affect the young Nigerians and affect the kids who wake up in the morning and the most basic amenities, food, shelter, security, you can't even find it. Security? In Nigeria <laughs> today, they say Nigeria where you're either struggling with bandits in the north or you're in the south and you're afraid of a policeman who's supposed to protect you. I mean, is that the same Nigeria where there's, you know, where the, have you heard of the price of food these days in the market? Have you seen the, you know, what it costs for a, a family of three, a family of four to feed themselves for a week? It, it, those are the most basic things you know, that you would expect would be readily, readily available. The government should have handled those, those aspects. Listen to a podcast a couple of days ago, and you know, the, um, Andrew Schultz was talking about how white people have time to argue about some of the most unusual, weirdest, irrelevant things. And the reason they have that time, they have time to, to create new things. They have time to invent new things. And, and almost, in fact, they, it feels like every time they're trying to kill themselves is mostly because they have the most basic things available. And so they look for more ways to excite themselves. They want to argue about the most in, insane things. They're talking about, oh, you know, we want, um, uh, where did I see that? You know, it's no longer about pedophilia now, no longer about, you know, um, um, homosexuality. They really now want laws to allow people to have sex with animals because of this, the environment that they are. Of course. Those I mean, very the basic, basic things, things are, are available. So but, I, I feel but, like, you know, come, just like before yesterday. Let, let me finish. Okay. We don't have those here. Another thing is therapy. And it's one thing that I'm sure I will speak with Benedict about. Therapy is so expensive in Nigeria that a lot of people don't even bother. You know, and so when you're a, you know, you're a young Nigerian dealing with mental health challenges and you remember that if you go to speak to a therapist, you, know, you, you may not be able to afford one session. You'd rather just stay at home and tell yourself that Nigerians are not depressed. Even, even, even before getting <clears throat> to the point where you're talking about seeking the help of a therapist, I mean, how many persons are really aware of the fact that you know, um, they can actually seek uh, medical, I mean, they can seek help, you know, talk to psychologists. The level of awareness is also another thing. But we do have our guest back, uh, Bene Benedict uh, Sama. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Benedict Sama, can you hear us? All right, we still might be struggling with um, the connection to our clinical psychologist this morning. So sorry, I missed you there. Okay, but well, you can hear us clearly now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, can we can. Me? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Can, can you hear me? All right. So while, while we try to sort that out, um, um, yes, therapy does exist in Nigeria, but not that many people know. And the reason is because it's not... Mental health challenges really aren't spoken about on that level in the first place. And then... Because therapy is expensive, um, but not just in Nigeria. It's just that you know our, our you know our, our level of income doesn't really meet up with the level of income um, in other parts of the world. Um, but for a regular Nigerian, you know, who wants to seek therapy, who's dealing with emotional stress, who's dealing with mental stress, um, by the time they think of how much it will cost them to have that one session, and they know that one session may not be enough, they would rather just tell themselves that. You know, Nigerians are not depressed. Nigerians are happy people. Um, <laughs> instead of you going to speak with a therapist. Um, so those are things that I think also need to be fixed if we need to actually work on mental health of uh, Nigerians. Yeah, that's also very apt. But I'm also thinking, on the other hand, that it's okay to have, you know, um, the support system working, functional. The family is first of all, and we don't really seem to pay attention these days. It's okay to have kids and not pay attention to what's really going on in their lives. Now, it, for some people would feel, yes, we're providing, uh, for those who can provide, I mean, they provide the basic things that they need, the shelter, the clothing, I mean, the food and what have you, education, but it goes beyond all of that. So you would also want to ask yourself, um, for those who people who can actually 
uh, meet the basic things of life or who have the basic things of life? Should they be depressed? Can they be depressed? Will be yeah, another still. question. They can be depressed. So my point now is, um, you know, the, the, the support system, f first of all, the family uh, needs to live up to expectation. Whether or not they can cater for, I mean, first of all, before even having a child, you should begin to consider all of that, right? That you should be responsible for this child up until a certain age where she, he or she would get to and then they are able to take care of, of themselves. So yes, the nuclear family, extended family, and then you have the church or, you know, the mocks and what have you. These are also support systems. It goes beyond just gathering, you know, in church on Sunday or going for the mocks and all of that. Uh, people should be able to talk about how they feel. I mean, that kind of atmosphere should be created. And what have you? There are all the groups as well. So you have, you know, uh, people who belong to a non-governmental organization or other bodies. Uh, I'm saying that we need to do better. As much as we're waiting that government would intervene, I'm saying that let's also try and see how we can also cushion this before we start saying, okay, yes, we're going to the state or begin to seek, uh, you know, professional help. Yeah, you know, I, I, I um, agree, you know, that these support systems need to come in, in, in play. Um, sadly, you know, the reality of, you know, family A is not the reality of family B. Um, family A might be living, you know, um, having a better experience, you know, financially they're a lot stronger. They can support their kids. They can, you know, do, you know, spend, you know, whatever it is, you know, to ensure that their kids are happy. But the next family may not be the same thing. And another thing is, sadly, family B and the, the population of family Bs are way more than the population of family A. Um, and so this struggle, um, you, know, f you know, in every family unit, um, you know, spreads across the whole country. Um, there's a lot that needs to come into play to make these things easier for, uh, to, easier to do, basically. There's a lot that needs to come into play as a the Nigerian society in general. People are struggling. People are really, 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 really. really uh, and I'm thinking that okay, so let's even assume that we have moved way past at a time where we say, "I have five kids," right? We have moved. Let's just say we made the mistake, and so you have five kids. We've moved way past that time, but right now, and I'm thinking that we should be very deliberate about having children and raising mm. families. Well, that, that's that's a different different angle completely from um, mental health of Nigerian young Nigerians. Uh, Benedict uh, Sama, can you hear us now? I can hear you. I'm sure you can hear me too, right? Yes, yeah, slightly. All right, so please, uh, can you go ahead? We're almost out of time, but l let's quickly talk about solutions. You know, what, what are the things that you All think right. need to come into play in order to change this very, very sad statistics of uh, Nigerian, uh, young Nigerians being depressed? Okay, good. Um, so that's what we call the uh, um, reactive measures and proactive measures. So that is the preventive measures. Uh, you know, because most times the issue with depression is what we call distorted thought pattern. Okay, distorted thought pattern. Okay, the child believes that, oh, all things um, are not going on with him, or things are wrong, and so on and so forth. It just be able, it just starts changing the orientation. That the fact that you don't have a good background doesn't necessarily mean that you don't end up well. Okay, the fact that you're not. And you are not. I mean, you don't have the best TV at home now. You don't have PlayStations at home now, and your friends have it. I mean, their other houses do not really mean that you will not end up um, a great person in the future. So you just to be able to change those are reactive measures to be able to change the. I mean, their orientations and the area of parenting because. Uh, you know, there's what we call autocratic parenting style. Um, children who, who grow up in this environment also find themselves, you know, are vulnerable to depressions also. So we need to also be able to, to start or, uh, teaching our parents on the best parenting style to engage, I mean, with these children on. And there's also a need for you know, proper awareness in substance use, which is also one of the cause of depressions. Then what is the reactive measure? What do you do when a child is depressed? It's to seek professional help, therapy, okay? You, you go to a clinical psychologist. The first line of action is therapy. So then if, it, if therapy then doesn't work after some time, after some sessions, then we encourage and we recommend that you get medication alongside with the therapy. Thank you. Yeah, but, but I, I was asking earlier about the, you know, the cost of therapy in Nigeria. It's not, it's not the cheapest thing to, to uh, get access to. Um, I understand that, yes, there's also free therapy you know, uh, sessions here and there. But it's not, if, you're, if you'll be honest, it's not you know, very affordable for the average Nigerian to see a therapist every week. <laughs> Yes, I totally agree. But for instance, in my office, um, 
we run certain um, certain free services on certain days of the week, but that is not really uh, it's not often. Okay, it's um, occasionally, but to be sincere with you, therapy is not um, is not cheap. And then looking at how many therapy you need for a child. For instance, if you're dealing with depression and you're using a CBT approach, that is a minimum of 12 sessions, for instance. Exactly. A minimum of 12 sessions. And a session can cost as much as $40,000 per session. How much? Can, it can be as much as a minimum of $40,000. So, but it varies, okay? It varies from, from practitioners to practitioners. Mm. Thank you. So, so the next question would be, um, is there a role government can play in all of this to help, uh, you know, reduce, because we know we can't say it would vanish, but reduce, uh, you know, the rate at which uh, children fall into depression? Exactly. Now, one of the things I think the government can start doing, which is not really being done now, if you look at certain um, countries outside the country, right, I'm sorry, um, outside this continent, rather, they have, there is now mental health curriculum even from primary school level mental health has now been you know drafted inculcated into their curriculum so children are now learning about depressions they are learning about preventing depressions they are learning about you know how to manage depressions they're learning about the symptoms and that is the, the best thing that will have, i mean one of the best things rather so that is what i think the government can help start doing let's bring this idea you know, into drafting mental health, different mental health topics and management preventions into our curriculum, start from primary school level, which is now in, in operative in some other countries. I know certain countries in the Europe that we create a lot of information for these children and empowerment for them. Thank you. All right. Benedict Sama, clinical psychologist, thank you, thank you very much for uh, sharing your time with us. We apologize, of course, uh, the network had its own challenges. Um, but we hope that the mental health conversation continues to spread across Nigeria and more people are bold enough to speak up and to, you know, seek help where necessary. Uh, but thanks very much for your time once again. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much. Have a good day. You too. All right. Stay with us. Uh, coming up next, we're going to be talking sports. Is Gennard Raw going to be sacked or not? And if uh, yes, uh, of course, we'll be having Wally Scott telling us a little bit more about this after the short break. <laughs>